Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday. Good to have Sean back. Matt did a great job yesterday, but good to have Sean back. He did do a great job yesterday, caught the podcast. Great to be back, uh, too. Well, did you hear the play-by-play calls of the day yesterday? <laughs> 4 of 6. <laughs> that was the topic of discussion in the programming meeting this morning with the suit. <laughs> I said, I, I'm not here for a day, and you sabotage the beginning of the second hour of the show. And you shove this in my substitute producer's lap, demanding that this needs to be on the show? <laughs> <laughs> but to his credit, like everything else, it followed the exact same pattern. Sure did. Of It did. <laughs> First of all, Deb's doing well. Much better today than yesterday. Yeah, she toughed it out as we went to our trip yeah. to Pittsburgh over the weekend for the Steelers game, the finals. That, that that's the that, that that's the quietest she's ever been at a Steelers game. So she was she was cheering from within <laughs> on on Sunday. But uh, yeah, she toughed it they out. Lost and, 30, she lost thirty to nine. She sounded like everybody else. Oh man. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later, but uh, yeah. but yeah, she uh, rested yesterday, feeling much better today compared to yesterday. So moving, so, in, moving in the right direction. So, so again, re- re- refresh everybody on the suits treatment of uh, Deb's hospital visit. <laughs> I had surgery once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, instead of how she doing. It became about the anniversary of his surgery. So now we get to the play-by-play cut of the day yesterday. Great, great one for Merrill Reese. It's tremendous. It was. Meanwhile, when the day began, not under consideration at all was the second one. But... Matt's young, and I think he felt a certain pressure. Yeah. Uh, do you happen to have it here? I can find it here. Let's see if this is. I'm, I played it on game night on Friday night. So I'm trying this. It's either one. So you played it on game night. I, I did. I, I mean, I I almost like I almost stuttered after the call because <laughs> it was the final call on the shot sheet. Since it was the pick six to wrap the game up, and I'm thinking, yeah. wait. Hang on, I'm I'm thinking this as I'm finishing the highlight reel, you know, to go to the next segment in game night. And as I'm talking, I'm thinking, man, I, I'm sensing the trend. <laughs> the, the, the trend continues, exactly. but I'm but, I, but I'm trying to focus and go to the next <laughs> the next batch of highlights for the next game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know, you've got it there. I know you do. Yeah, I do. As soon as you find it. Because we need to refresh the audiences. First of all, it, all right, know, the, play, the, the play call is like, let's okay is is ex, is is excellent. It okay? is an excellent call. Yes. So let's so let's just make sure that you know everyone understands. Yes, this was the pick but, six fr- right, Friday but, night Thompson Street but, Stadium that locked up the victory the, for the Braves. But there's one part of it that stands out above all that just takes it from being great to oh here we go again. Back to pass, looking all the way to Titus. Pick six coming. Trigger. Oh, touchdown, Shikalemi! Trigger saw what I saw. He saw Shamori zoned in on 21, and the deuce took it to the house. Do you see what I see? I see. 
A ball, a ball <laughs> floating in the night. <laughs> Krieger, do you see what I? <laughs> <laughs> All that's missing was Kevin saying, do you know what I know? What I know. <laughs> and the entire audience saying, yes, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, now it's a great call. It's an exciting call. It's well described, except for... <laughs> Go ahead. Let, let, let America hear that one one more time. Back to pass, looking all the way to Titus. Pick six coming. Krieger, goal! Touchdown, Shikilami. Krieger saw what I saw. He saw Shamori zoned in on 21, and the deuce took it to the house. I saw what I saw. Well, it was far more important that he saw it. <laughs> so now this comes up in the meeting this morning. Yeah, we were joshing around. <laughs> and I can hear him now that I'm, I'm a tough critic. I, but so far in the last week, everything has been about him. Deb has surgery. It's about the anniversary of his surgery. <laughs> the kid intercepts the ball on Friday night, runs it back for a touchdown. It's actually about what he saw. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I Can't make it up. I, <sighs> Jamie's out there selling and selling and selling and selling. All we ever hear about is, is digital media. That both sales this month went well. Okay, great. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm concerned. I am too. Sounds like it's one that needs a little bit of therapy. A little therapy. They'd be good. Do that. Well, I'll tell you, though, a lot of people that were walking out of Heinz Field with me on Sunday afternoon needed some needed therapy. therapy, baby. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Ugh. You just hope that that was just a, a just one bad day at the office for Ben. And there's so many anomalies in that yeah, game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, third third, ask, qu- third can, quarter. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something about that though? Sure. When's the last time you played a great game? <sighs> That's the thing. I mean, you talk about Le'Veon Bell and his great games, but yeah, when was the last time he? It's been a while. It's been a while. They're just underachieving across the board. I mean, there are just so many anomalies in that game. I mean, third quarter alone, time of possession, they had it for thir- – the Steelers had the ball for 13 minutes alone in the third quarter, and they were outscored 14-3. to three. Yeah. Jacksonville's got the worst running defense in the league, and Le'Veon Bell only gets the ball 15 times in the game. I mean, those are just – the, the top two topics of discussion taking the Gateway Clipper back to Station Square on Sunday. So maybe uh, maybe Deb was quiet because of the game. And because <laughs> <laughs> it could be a combination of a few things. Yeah. yeah. I'll give her my best. I sure will. Feeling a lot I'll better f- today than yesterday. and Oh, yeah. No. Going one day at a time. So very, very happy about that. I am too. I had to tell Jack Ham the one about <laughs> we were going through the series of things last week. And when you said when when the when the story that Sarah Sarah did on the news about the Northumberland prison <laughs> and you, of, of all the people on the face of the earth that would jump in and say this when the fact that you said it made it exponentially funnier uh, 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 I've, been, I've been to prison uh, I've been to jail <laughs> wait what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? 
<laughs> and you told me after the show, I, I just wasn't brave enough to pull the trigger. <laughs> I, was, I, I wasn't brave enough to say it at all. Even the fact that you said it made it so much funnier. Well, it, it, didn't, it didn't fall into the George Carlin seven dirty word category, so I knew I was scot-free. So. Well, I knew that. But, uh, I thought if I said it, people, you're going too far now. <laughs> so, I, let you, so I allowed you to go too far. <laughs> Hey, uh, Daryl uh, sent a very thoughtful email uh, to me. You forwarded this on Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, I want to say I love the show, and I enjoy listening to you and Jack on Penn State Saturdays. Appreciate that. I agree that Cam Newton's comments to Jordan Rodriguez, he, he says Jordan, so I'll fill in Jordan Rodriguez, were completely out of line. And he should have to deal with the repercussions of his actions. Listening to your podcast on Thursday, you really laid into him regarding those comments, and justifiably so. After reading articles on his comments, I also became aware of some racist tweets that Jordan made a few years ago. In light of this, I would hope that you would take the time on your show to address her own poor judgment and condemn her equally as you did Cam. And Daryl's correct. Now, we know Jordan. I don't know Cam Newton at all. And it's not as if Cam Newton has not done some really great things in the community uh, along the way. But there's no question, Jordan, and you've seen the tweets, right, from from the past, from mm-hmm. her in the stories? Mm-hmm. right? The incredibly terrible judgment of putting those tweets out there years ago. Now, was it immaturity? Was it what? Whatever happens to be, whether it's lack of judgment, uh, maturity, whatever at the time, because she was much younger when she did that. All right, that can't be tolerated. Can't be. So. And she's, uh, she did not cover the Carolina-Detroit game. She's taken a little bit of time off in the Observer. So hopefully Cam Newton can get past this and have a better understanding than in press conferences or in any interaction to keep it a level playing field. And hopefully she can get past this because... The tweets I read from years ago from her, which were wrong and should be condemned, that's also not the person that I, that I have, was around for a year and a half and whatever and, and continue to talk to an interview with the idea, that, look, every person should be given the opportunity to improve. And I've never once seen any issue out of her and... Hopefully the two of them can can work, do their jobs, and have respect for one another. Fair enough. I hope that answers your your uh, your uh, question, Daryl. But yes, you you must all always condemn, always must condemn when you see anything, whether it's a sign, whether it's a tweet, whether it's a Facebook post, whether it's whether it's spoken out loud, you know, it always must be condemned. Always must be. But I'm also somebody who wants to give people additional chances. I would give Cam Newton additional chances. I'd give her additional chances. Maybe I'm too nice. I don't know. But we'll take a break. There weren't any more requests for additional play-by-play calls of the day, were there? I've not gotten any today, no. Days young. This is true. That's, what, <laughs> that's only the first segment, yeah. yeah. It's only, only the first segment, and you know, and we know he likes to barge in. Nah, no one's rushed in yet. You, you and I both know he's going to. You know, we, we both know he's going to. He can't. He can't stay away from the limelight. Have you noticed that? Letting us know he's still around, remaining relevant. When he's on Thursday, when right. we have him on the show Thursday, mm-hmm. 
Hey, why don't you count the number of times he says I or me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll tally it at the end of the segment. It's like listening to player interviews in the locker room and you count how many times they say man. Man or uh or um. <laughs> I, mean, I think it would be. I think I think it would be a fun exercise for the audience. This is a kind of an audience participation thing. Let's set the over under. <sighs> I asked usually ask three questions, right? And his answers are exponentially longer than everybody else's. <laughs> so in six minutes, what do you think? Five. Oh, I was going higher now. I was going to say 20. I was going to say 20. I was going to say 20. Because there's going to be a lot of I thinks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Back with more in a moment here on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now, did you notice the brilliance of Doug's touchdown call there? Focused on the field. And your Bucknell Bison. As opposed to saying, my shukalee. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, has he ever said that? <laughs> it's it sounds it sounds possessive. <laughs> uh, he does, the, he, he doesn't say, Matt, you saw what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you saw it. It's your job to see it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons they put you there is that you could see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on social media now. Hashtag, I can't win. <laughs> Don't hit send. Wait, hang on. Uh, Hang on. Don't hit send. Don't do that. Oh, my goodness. Oh. (laughs) Can't do that. (laughs) Don't send. (laughs) We have Neil Kulong on the show today. Looking forward to it. Talk about the Steelers. Chiefs are next. Refocus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be as positive as best I can. <laughs> it's time to start achieving got, instead of underachieving. They got handed the Bears and Jacksonville. Oh, uh, yeah. Who in turn both handed it to them. Like, I don't know what's going on. It's this crazy, wacky NFL. It's a week-by-week basis. Nobody in that league's happy. You know, there's nobody in the league happy. Who in the league is happy? Is anybody in the league happy? I mean, all of them go to work on Sunday. Like, oh, here we go. Having trouble trying to figure out what new vehicle to buy? Stop! SMC has all your bases covered. Compare Ford, Lincoln, Kia, and Hyundai. All at the dealer who has been satisfying more customers for over 100 years. 53 Ford F-150s starting at $23,994. Sunbury Motors has your compact SUVs covered. 46 Ford Escapes starting at $19,925. Take 3112 off all 17 Hyundai Tucsons. Kia Sportages start at just $23,553. SMC has your mid size SUV in stock. Right now, 2018 Kia Sorento start at $24,999 with 21 Sorentos to choose from. Take up to $49.49 off 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe Sports and up to five grand off a Lincoln MKX. Sunbury Motors has all your bases covered for your next new vehicle. Go to sunburymotors.com to compare your next new Ford, Lincoln, Kia, or Hyundai. Sunbury Motors, satisfying more customers, selling more cars. A tradition of trust since 1915. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors Studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, fourth trade in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Great time to go out and buy a car, isn't it? Ooh, it's gorgeous out there. 
Before we get to Neil Kulong, who will talk about the brilliance of the Steelers' recent performance, we get to this day in sports history. And on this day in sports history in 1865, the billiard ball was patented by John Wesley Hyatt. 1964, NBC aired the opening ceremonies of the 1964 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. First live color TV program to be transmitted to the U.S. by satellite. Olympics will be back in Tokyo in 2020. 1977, Joe Namath played the final game of his NFL career. 1979, Mark Messier made his NHL debut with the Edmonton Oilers. 1987, Tom McLean finished rowing across the Atlantic Ocean and set a record by doing so in 54 days and 18 hours. 1987, Doug Jarvis of the Hartford Whalers ended his streak of 984 straight games in the NHL, still a record. The streak started back on October 8, 1975. 2011, Nelson Cruz of the Texas Rangers hit the first ever postseason walk-off Grand Slam to give the Rangers a 7-3 win. The win gave the Rangers a 2-0 lead in the American League Championship Series against Detroit. And on this day in 2012 was the last time that the suit did not personalize every single thing during the course of a conversation. What? Back that far? You're around him every day. Seems like right. yesterday. But then he didn't personalize everything yesterday? <laughs> I mean, you could be hit by a truck, and he would talk about being hit by a toy truck when he was eight. <laughs> I was hit by a toy truck once. It was a Tonka. Like, <laughs> I don't know about you. I just, I just, I just find it baffling, especially above all the Deb thing. I mean, doesn't she come first? She's the one living it. I think he needs a, uh, an agent, a representative, to go out and speak for him. What do you think? <laughs> Spokesperson. Spokesperson. Ah, <clears throat> representative. Well, absolutely. Uh, Antonio Brown wants the ball. Le'Veon Bell now is saying, I'm not getting the ball enough. I don't think Neil Kulon is getting the ball enough. I, I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not. And, um, yeah, I, basically, I'm not Antonio Brown, but I'm not getting the ball. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at what it comes down to with this team. I've looked at the stats. I don't, I, I mean, you're not even on the stat sheet. Yeah, you know what, we're trying to fix that. It really kind of depends on the game plan. You know, you get behind in the second half, you end up having to kind of change things up, and that's what leads to 55 pass attempts against the best passing defense in the league and uh, whatever it was, like 17 rushing attempts against uh, the worst rushing defense. So, um, yeah, I, I would agree with Tomlin in that sense. They definitely uh, they definitely got away from something. <laughs> something bad happened. I just know that uh, the game was really turned on them throwing the ball and you know throwing it to the other team and then having them run into the end zone. So, definitely uh, definitely a, a, an odd game plan to, to put it mildly. I don't think that. Uh, I, I, here's the thing, and it, you know, I've gotten away from criticizing Todd Haley, kind of the way it seems everybody is right now, uh, largely because I didn't feel that the plans themselves in their first couple of games were really more of the problem. In this game, I mean, Le'Veon Bell had nine carries at halftime. They were behind, yeah, but it certainly wasn't an, a, you know an insurmountable lead or anything. They didn't need to, to immediately you know gun the ball down the field for the entire second half just to get in it. It, it was throwing the ball in the second half what got them in, in trouble in the first place. So for me, they. They didn't get to establish a whole lot of it, but at the same time, you're, you're facing a really good defensive front. Jacksonville played they, – they played really well, and in many ways the Steelers kind of put them in a position to play really well, but they executed and they made plays. Uh, they're, they're fast. Those guys are all mm-hmm. over the field. It was hard for the Steelers' offense really to do anything, but uh, they're, they're, you know, they're running out of excuses with that. They're, they're going to have to figure something out. A couple of weeks ago we talked about Ben Roethlisberger, and we both said you know, he's doing okay, but he's not really playing great. Uh, is this a slump for him? I mean, I'm sure he hopes it's only a slump, but, I mean, do you feel in some ways he is slumping? 
Um, I, I would say so, yeah. I mean, it would. We, you think back. When was the last time Roethlisberger played an outstanding game? Right. You know, it, it, it's been a while. He's played some decent games. He hasn't really, like, ripped somebody's throat out in a while. And he used to do that at least a couple times a season, um, particularly early when he was healthier. Uh, now he just he doesn't look like – um, he doesn't look as confident in the pocket as he used to, and I wonder if some of that is not uh, receiver-related. And the reason I say that is what he looks like right now, uh, minus the sacks. He's not really getting sacked all that much, so he's not fumbling the ball that much. Uh, he looks like how he did to start off the 2013 season, and that was a, a really, really bad season in, in terms of their receiver depth. They were just starting to kind of build that back. Um, they had Antonio Brown. Emmanuel Sanders was out there getting 80 or 90 targets. Uh, they, they didn't have anything, really. And Sanders was a, a, a mediocre option within that offense. He didn't do very well for what they needed him to do. Um, obviously, he's, he's done great in Denver, but he, he wasn't doing that in Pittsburgh. A large part of it is just because they needed him to be the split end. They needed him to go deep, and, and he wasn't getting open deep. So, for me, it's kind of like I, I wonder if this isn't more of an issue just with the depth of the offense because that's the problem they ran into last season. And when they, they put everything on Le'Veon Bell, when he was getting at least 25 touches a game uh, during that 10-game that winning streak, that's when they really kind of all came together. The defense came along as well. And it almost kind of masked Roethlisberger a little bit. Remember that, that game against Buffalo last year? Roethlisberger right. did everything he possibly could to lose it. If it wasn't for right. Bell's 200 yards in a road game, they would have lost. So it, it looks almost like he just he isn't trusting everybody else except for Antonio Brown. He's got time in the pocket, but he's not stepping up and delivering decisive throws. And when he is now, you know, he's missing, he's off the mark, or he's telegraphing his pass so badly the defensive lineman's knocking it down. That, that's what Jacksonville did. So yeah, I definitely think he's in a slump, and I, I wonder what it's going to take to get him out of it and if the Steelers even have that. <laughs> I mean, does it seem like he'll lock in on a guy? I mean, sometimes when you get a little insecure about something, you'll lock in on somebody and you don't see the field as well. Is he still looking around to progressions or is he locking? What you said, that that's exactly my point. He is locking on uh, any one receiver. Whether it's Brown, obviously it's going to be Brown, and it should be. Even when the offense is going really well, you should probably find a way to get Brown 40% of your targets. Um, it, it, no matter who he's going to, though, um, it, it seems like he's showing that this is the you know this is the guy I need to get into this spot because you know whether it's pressure coming or whatever. But the defensive linemen are the ones who are seeing that. You know the, the secondary, yes, you're a lot further away. You can kind of tell by the, the quarterback's body language where he's going with the ball. But the defensive linemen are right up into his eyes. They can see it. That's why they're getting into the lanes that they are, and that's why he has as many tip passes as he has this year. I think tips led to, to three of those five interceptions and. Uh, pressure getting hit square in the chest led to another one and there was no doubt he, who he was throwing the ball to on that play it was it was the hot route to Vance McDonald and he had to because somehow or other a, a unblocked guy came you know straight up the middle and, and laid him out so the defense is forcing some of that but you can't exclusively put uh, each of these poor quarterback performances on uh, an impressive and athletic defense like we saw in Jacksonville. Certainly they, they deserve the credit for it, but I don't think Roethlisberger is playing as well uh, as he should be, and I don't think he's playing with the same level of confidence that he has. It looks like he's missing that more than anything else. That, to me, suggests he's kind of got qualms with the, the personnel that the Steelers are putting out in the field right now. Which then means they have to put more pressure on their defense to make certain things happen. Do they have enough defense, in your opinion, to compensate? Um, it, it, it's interesting. I think we saw it for a, a, a good part of the game. And really, Leonard Fournette is a beast. That guy is going to be an other world running back. Yes, I mean, for, for him, I don't know if you saw it or not, but ESPN Next Gen staff keeps like a, a miles per hour tracker of each player. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he led the league and he, he ran the fastest of anybody this past week of like 22 miles an hour. <laughs> and they were like, you know, freak track star guys in the NFL that were hitting 20, 21 yesterday. I look at him, I don't think speed. I think just pure power. The guy is just a, a wall of muscle. I mean, he, he, you know, you get that guy, you know, running straight at you 24, 25 times a game, you're going to eventually give up the, the, you know, the 90 yard run like he had. But they, they held him in check. I mean, he had some good runs. He's a very good player and clearly was all of their offense. I, I thought the defense did a good job until that last one. The game's way out of question and they're probably 
you know, they've been on the field 80% of the fourth quarter. They're, they're dragging at that point. So you can kind of see where that comes from. They, they did a good job defensively. They didn't play a very good quarterback, and, and certainly the Jaguars are doing everything they can to make sure that their quarterback is not a factor in the game. Uh, but they, they took the passing game completely away. Uh, their, their secondary has done a good job, in my opinion, so far this season. So you're interested to see how that's going to continue to develop. They're, they're getting outstanding play out of their, their corners, which I didn't really quite expect. But Mike Hilton in particular, he's playing really well. Um, I, I think you're getting a lot out of T.J. Watt. You're getting, in my opinion, an all-pro level effort out of Ryan Shazier. Uh, Cam Hayward might be at that level as well. I, I think they have enough to be able to compete defensively. But if they're on the field that much – in, in the second half, if they're losing five to one in the turnover battle, yeah, I mean, any defense is going to collapse under that kind of pressure. Uh, and uh, I should point out, by the way, that uh, uh, that on the kickoff return Saquon Barkley made against Indiana, he did top out at 22 miles an hour on that, just to give people perspective when you're talking about speed and what a guy can get to. Uh, Kansas City. Oh, this is a nice spot for them, but the Steelers play up to competition as well. What are your thoughts on this matchup, and why is Kansas City, why is Alex Smith in particular been so good? You know, this is such a great contrasting game, simply because where the Chiefs are now is exactly where the Steelers were in like 2014, 2015, 2016. They had such explosive playmakers and a, a good quarterback who makes quality decisions. With that, the, the Chiefs have been building, you know, over the last couple of years. It, it's been a good team. Um, now they're, they're in a tough division, and I, I don't think they went into the season getting the type of credit that they, uh, that they deserve. I, I certainly don't think they're going to go 16 and 0, but right. they're, they're stacked. They have a really, really deep roster, and offensively in particular, they have nothing but playmakers around them. This is why they, they cut Jeremy Macklin. Everyone was all up in arms about that, but right. Jeremy Macklin can't run with these guys. That's why he, he stands out. He's a liability in that offense. From Alex Smith's perspective, really all he needs to do is just deliver an accurate pass to the right place. And if, if you want to define Alex Smith as anything, that's it. He's just got guys that can go down 20, 25 yards now compared to what he had two years ago, and they could only go like 12. They, they just didn't have any real athleticism. Uh, Travis Kelsey is, is an unbelievable athlete. Uh, the, the size and, and speed combination that he has, he, he's basically unguardable down the scene. You're really going to struggle to, to contain that guy. Tyreek Hill obviously is, is extremely fast. I um, mean, what we're seeing from Kareem Hunt right now, I mean, it, it's, you know, I never thought I'd be saying this, but you have a legitimate argument who the MVP of the league is, Alex Smith or Kareem Hunt. Yeah. I didn't know who Kareem Hunt was until this season, you know. Right. They, they're playing great football, and it really looks to me a lot like what the Steelers were doing a couple of years ago, and they can't find that anymore. That To me, that, that brings up the big question. Are the Steelers just slow? Did they miss that window? You know, it, it feels right. like back in 2011, 2012, when you expected the level of, of defensive dominance that the Steelers had, it's like, yeah, they're, they're kind of good, but they're just kind of missing a lot of stuff. They weren't making plays. And they, they, largely, you look back on it, because they just weren't as fast anymore. Um, Martavis Bryant put on a bunch of weight. He does not look like the same player to me at all, physically, right. uh, obviously, but he, he doesn't move very well either. He's not running quickly. You know, they're, they're still trying to incorporate him in the short game, but he's not making guys miss. Bell isn't making anybody miss. Antonio Brown isn't making anybody miss. I, I, you can't quite grasp everything with it, but there's a lot of stuff going on within that offense, and I wonder if you know, the, the show isn't just over. How much, um, I don't know, disarray is there in the league right now with what's happening before games? You've got uh, the, the Miami offensive line. Every day it seems like there's a bad headline for the NFL. Uh, are you surprised that the, that they've fallen into a pattern where they can't seem to make any mid course corrections? Not to not to get too like metaphysical on a, a sports talk show, but negativity breeds negativity. You know, I, I've, I've always kind of found that. Neil, in my life. Neil, that's, more... that's Neil, that's that's too metaphysical. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best example of it, I, I was joking around with some friends of mine yesterday. You, you flip open. Um, whatever publication you're looking at on a national level, the top headlines were J.J. Watt's out for the year, right. Odell Beckham's out for the year, yep. the Dolphins' offensive line coach is snorting blow, um, stadium protests, our president is attacking the NFL for some reason. It's like, what is going on here? I mean, this, this used to be fun. This used to be entertaining. And exactly. now it seems like 
so much of it is is you know kind of snowballing into something else. And now the, the headline today is right after the president says what he says. Now Roger Goodell wants to make every player stand up. It's like oh boy, <laughs> there's no way you're going to get that to pass. Right. Uh, not you know basically you're you're forcing people to choose sides by thinking that you're just going to have everybody do the same thing. You saw what happened when the Steelers tried to do that. didn't work out very well because somehow or other the, the former Army Ranger happened to be outside the tunnel ahead of everybody else. Right. You can't send that message. You just can't. And it, it, I don't want to call it a distraction because that, that suggests it's not something that has merit, that has value. But the reality is you're not going to contain this. You're just not. And if you're worried about Trump tweeting at you all the time, I, I don't know what to tell you. The, the reality is the majority of the people who are doing this are, are doing it for a very specific reason. And I don't think this is something you're going to be able to get past, not even the NFL. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be a, a crazy end of the season. I, you know, I, I like talking about football. The other stuff now just kind of comes with it. It kind of has to. Oh, I know. I'm the same as you. I'd rather just sit there and you talk football. Let's talk about the games and things like that. But this other stuff is a reality, so you do have to treat it with the seriousness it deserves. So, Neil, always a pleasure, especially when we talk football. You can go back now to that metaphysical world that you're from. Yep, i got to go <laughs> find more of it. There's, there's more stuff coming. <laughs> Neil Kulong, USA Today. We'll come back with more in a moment on News Radio 1070 WKOK, brought to you by Sunbury Motors. Great to have you with us on the show. Our thanks to Neil Kulong for joining us. I mean, I think just a very honest and direct conversation about where the Steelers are right now. Just like I thought we had a very direct and honest conversation yesterday with Matt Leon about where the Eagles are right now. The Eagles are soaring. They're a really good story. The Steelers are not. I mean, you were at the game. Oh, they're just underachieving completely across the board. And just your conversation with Neil really has me concerned, and it's true. Uh, they're looking really slow. And it goes back to your point. When was the last time Ben Roethlisberger had a jump off the page, really good, very impressive game? Well, you think about what he did. Look, they've been able to win consistently over the years because he's been at the helm. This is not a case where you're Mike Tomlin and you're looking at the assistant coaches saying, okay, how many are in favor of Landry Jones? There isn't going to be a single hand that goes up. I'm not even sure Landry Jones would put his hand up. I just think that it is... I don't know if he's getting enough time. Looks to me like he is. I don't know whether he's making the wrong reads or he's locking in on one guy. I don't know. Neil thinks he's locking in on one guy, which is very possible. And that also could be some of the reasons why he'll hold the ball a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, a little bit longer, because he's waiting for that one guy to break free. I just, you know, it, again, how he goes is how the Steelers go. I don't care what anybody says. I know you'll hear, Antonio Brown's our best player. Well, whoop de do. I mean, I want my quarterback to be my best player. Got to be. The quarterback's got to be your best player. Has to be. Or at least your most important player. And when I say Ben, when was the last time Ben had a great game? I'm not looking for... I'm not looking for 38 out of 40 for 400 yards. I'm not looking for that at all. I mean, it's it's funny because when Ben's yardage is like under 300, that's when that's when they increase their chances of winning. And that's when you lean more toward that offensive balance that not only the Steelers want, but pretty much I would think any NFL team strives to to all achieve. Right. I mean, let's flip it to college for a moment. You know, Saquon Barkley, everybody is zeroed in on him. What's really helped Penn State is they've got somebody in Trace McSorley, a quarterback, that has the ability to 
take advantage of what is being given. I'm not even sure Ben Roethlisberger on a pro level is taking advantage of what's being given to him out there. All right, more next hour. Great to have you with us today. Brought to you by our good friends at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Key Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Your station for news, weather, business, and CBS Sports Radio. News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury and on WKOK.com. 